Patrick, I saw you out there today uh, putting up a serious battle with some of the competitors, and it just looked freaking amazing. I mean, your car is just sharp as can be. I always see these interesting things and details about your car that nobody else has, like mono lug wheels. You've got one nut on each wheel, and it's like freaking IndyCar stuff. I'm, I mean, what's the deal with your car? Yeah. First of all, thanks for uh, doing the interview. Appreciate mm -hmm. it. And, uh, you know, it's great to get any visibility for American Iron. And actually, that kind of goes back to your question of why are we doing things like this with monolog wheels, crazy brakes, you know, it's it's not really a matter of we're going faster on the track because of this stuff, but we are drawing visibility to the car in the series. It's, uh, it's fun technology, you know, it looks cool. At the end of the day, is it a competitive advantage? <laughs> Unless we had to do pit stops, probably not. Uh, but yeah, you know, it's, it's good racing, it's hard racing, and um, when, you, when you take the time to build a car like this and when people can appreciate it, um, it's just great for the series. Awesome. Now, I see, uh, I see a lot of guys, I mean, there's a lot of guys on your crew, I mean, more than anybody else. Usually I walk by somebody's trailer or their, their toter and their, their, their setup, and there's like one or two guys kind of lazying about, but in your car, it seems like, I mean, it's just a big black and orange blur with a bunch of guys with S&S shirts on. I mean, what's the story with the s and S? Well, you know, when I first came to the track, I was driving my car to the track and unloading, you know, the pile of stuff like you see everybody doing out here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as, as things progress, as you decide that this is something that you want to do, like I did, you know, you start buying equipment little by little. And so here we are sitting in a, in a toter home, you know, mm -hmm. with a stacker trailer and all kinds of madness. Very impressive, and, by the way. <laughs> yeah, the AC is nice here at Buttonwilla. Yeah. But what happens is you get you get a car and a, and a crew, you get like your one crew guy to help out, you know, you, you start going and then that that gives you a little bit of room to kind of up the game on the car. And, and with that becomes, you know, a maintenance intensive thing. And so the more you want to change, you know, the more hands on you need. And that, that's kind of what happens with, with this is that the more we want to do, the more the more guys it takes. And, you know, this the setup is kind of like a, it, it's built upon itself like a snowball effect, I think. And um, at the end of the day, you know, team synergy is important, and we, we're all very good. We're all friends, and um, we work together. Communication is very important. We communicate great. Mm -hmm. um, Eric, who's kind of like the engineer, data guy, he and I talk on the radio. Troy, the crew chief, Charlie's, uh, you know, mechanic, and Jeff, the driver, you know, drives the rig, gets everything sorted out, takes care of everything. So, and there's always one or two guys that kind of show up just to hang out. And we throw shirts on them, you know. To, <laughs> <laughs> kind of, they're like filler, you know, they're like extras. <laughs> that explains, I, it, look, it seems like there's a team of like 10 guys just jockeying in the car all the time. Maybe oh, yeah, there's yeah. less, but it's just they're, everybody's moving fast and, you know, they're definitely not lazy about it. And it seems like, you know, every before every race or after every race, the car is up in the air, the wheels are off the car, and something is going on. It's not just sitting there, it's not just waiting. It's sure. something's going on all the time. And Well, you know, part of that is also we try to model everything we do after people that have had success during this, you know, in the past and present. And, you know, I, I look to the Audi team, mm -hmm. uh, the way they operate, you know, the factory Audi team, like the TDI, R15, R10 guys. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I heard Alan McNish had an interesting quote. He said, there's no bad luck, there's just lack of preparation. So. One, one thing that we do here is we check and double check. We have checklists, we have checklists for everything. We have checklists for everything that goes in this toter. We have checklists for everything that goes in the trailer, car, nuts and bolts. Um, every one of the guys, Troy, Eric, Charlie, Jeff, they know every nut and bolt in that car. So, you know, it comes off the track, it gets checked. You know, you're asking a car to do something that it's not really built for. Um, you're putting a lot of strain on the equipment. And so at the end of the day, it's kind of, you know, there's a human being whose life is at risk running around the track. So, part of part of the process is just the checklists and everything that goes into building a prepared car and making sure it's ready to go on the track. Yeah, it definitely lays down an extraordinary performance, and not only that, it's one of the best looking cars out there. And it seems to me that some of the best looking cars I've seen have actually uh, a lot of to do with SNS fabrication. Um, I mean, what has SNS done for you as far as what is? This, this the shop services provided. I mean, what did you use that SNS does? Yeah, it's actually an interesting story how Troy and I kind of hooked up. Um, he was a drag race guy. I mean, still is really a hard. And I asked him to do some fabrication stuff on my road race car, my Audi. And he reluctantly did. And inevitably, what happened is people here at the track 
admired his work and wanted to have worked under their car. So I think after me, Ernesto was uh, kind of next in line to be part of the SNS road racing family. Okay. And then, uh, of course, Andy Sutak, both AIX cars. And um, just kind of some of the things that we all pride ourselves in are having not only fantastically prepared cars, you know, meticulous, you know, with, with great fabrication, nice looking welds and everything, you know, paint, you know, whole nine yards. Um, it, it's the whole package, you know, s, &S you, you can go there. Troy and I have worked together for years, just, and, and, and every time we do a project, you know, it, it just gets better. And now, you know, we won't even do a project unless it's literally show car quality, something we can put on the track and then literally wipe down and have people come see themselves in the reflection, you know, of the, of the car. And it's just, it, it, it builds on itself again, you know, if you, if you have a clean car, it's easier to recognize leaks or a problem that's, go, that's going on. So, you know, it's again, it's just part of the preparation. And I, I guess by default, we have cars that are nice and shiny. And well, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, when I see your car, uh, Ernesto Rocco's car, uh, Andy Sutak's car. I'm, I'm looking at these cars and and I'm thinking, my God, these guys must be out of their minds to road race these cars with these really bitchin' paint jobs and just everything looks so sharp. I mean, it, it looks like a show car. And then when you hear it go I'm around the track and even when it's parked, people are kind of flocking around it. It's just, it's extraordinary. It's it's very impressive. And uh, that's uh, why I wanted to come and talk to you about what you got going on because it's really impressive so uh, I appreciate it and, and again you know that's part of the part of what we're trying to do with the series is get a little you know reaction from people saying like wow that car's really cool you know what series is that and then you know we get AI AIX on the map and then you know ultimately we can bring sponsors in that uh, want to see their name right around a shiny car like that absolutely and, and go out and haul ass sure absolutely it, well it's all about fun and it sounds like you guys are having a lot of fun and uh, you know moving everything forward and upward at all times and uh, maintaining a, a, a good positive status and a relationship between you and the guys at SNS and and uh, the other drivers. Uh, I see you chatting friendly with some of the guys that look like you're out there to kill each other, but it sounds, you know, you guys are always buddies at the end. So it sounds yeah, like... At the end of the day, it's still a gentleman's sport, you know? Absolutely. And, and because you're going 100 miles an hour door to door with somebody, you know, you, you not only have to have a certain level of respect for them, you have to know that person pretty well, too. Yeah. Um, and, and it's a bonding experience, you know? Um, Ryan and I had a really good race today, you know, we're, we're better pals because of it, you know, we respect each other uh, for the, you know, the talent that he is, yeah, he did a spectacular job today, um, and, and so uh, at, the, at the end of the day, when you can go to door to door with somebody, you know, you're, you, have, you have that friendship, and it's something that uh, I, I can't really explain, you know, on, on camera, you know, until, until you go do it and right. experience it. Well, good luck to you in this future season and everything else that you undertake, especially with uh, SNS and uh, any other racing that you uh, find yourself competing in. And uh, it's very nice talking to you. Thanks, appreciate it. No